Welcome to the University of Finley Art and Culture Show. I am your host, Sharenda. And today we have some very special guests who have come a very long way to visit with us. Uh, on the set today, we have some very distinguished individuals. Dawa is sitting right next to me. He is going to be the speaker and interpreter today. And Dawa, I will have you introduce the other monks that are sitting with us. Uh, good morning. Uh, we are very happy to be here. And uh, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, my uh, uh, the other monks. Um, he is uh, uh, Gishitashi, he is a tour guru, and the next one is uh, Chamba. He is chanting master of the tour, and uh, uh, Lobsang, he is Lobsang, and he is a butter sculpture master. And in addition to interpreting, are you doing other things on this tour? Yes. Uh, so our first uh, purpose of this tour is sharing our knowledge in the United States uh, that uh, we uh, learn uh, in our monastery more than 30 years. So uh, we are sharing those knowledge and uh, our, uh, we have some programs. So we are doing programs uh, like uh, San Mandala, uh, this is very highest practice of the Buddhism and also the, we are doing the lecture about uh, how to do the right way of meditation, how to make this world uh, more peaceful and uh, how to um, make our life meaningful through the, uh, put those advice uh, in our daily life and also we are doing empowerment uh, butter sculpture demonstration, debate demonstration, and blessing, and ritual. Uh, so a lot of things Lots we are sharing. Of things. Could you please give us the name of your monastery? So my monastery name is Ganden Sharze Monastery. And you are, your home is located in India, southern India, correct? Yes. But that is not where the monastery began. So our original uh, monastery is in Tibet. Uh, now uh, the, in, the, in, uh, in Tibet, uh, the, our original uh, monastery have only uh, 200 uh, around 200 monks, uh, very less monks, mm -hmm. and uh, and in India we have uh, 1,600 uh, monks. Mm -hmm. So uh, we escaped from uh, Tibet. So around 1955-56, uh, uh, the you know Chinese government uh, uh, sent the uh, many uh, army in. Um, Tibet and they uh, start to destroy our monastery, our Tibetan culture and they kill uh, more than 80,000 of Tibetan that time and we uh, don't have uh, more options and uh, uh, 100,000 uh, 100, uh, Tibetan people escape from um, Tibet and uh, come to India mm -hmm. uh, as a refugee. Mm -hmm. So we uh, start again to uh, flourish and to maintain those Tibetan culture mm -hmm. and Tibetan uh, Buddhism. Mm -hmm. There are many fascinating mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. within Buddhism. Yes. So one of them that you will be covering uh, on your tour is the Mandala, and you had mm. mentioned that earlier. Mm. And I love that you said that that's the highest because that is the one where it takes hundreds of hours mm. to make yeah. a mandala. Yeah. And from the research I did, originally what was used to create these were precious gems that were yeah. ground down yes. into what some would say sand or a dust powder. And to this day, for very special occasions and experiences within the faith, 
that still is practiced. Mm, yeah. So, so mandala practice is uh, the very ancient uh, practice and ancient art. It teach by the Buddha, mm -hmm. Buddha owned when he was alive, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, more than two thousand five hundred years before he teach all those practice. So uh, we have and uh, all those teaching we Tibetan already translated into the Tibetan. So now we are uh, keep continue those practice till now. Wonderful. And in the United States, we collect things. We have to have more garages. We have to have bigger houses because we collect. In a mandala, the monks are giving all of their talent, creating beautiful sculptures within. Do you frame that and give it to someone, put glue on it, or do you release it? Yeah, so uh, actually the Sen Mandala practice have the opening ceremony, then the main practice, then dissolution ceremony. So uh, like uh, when we birth and we live, then we death. So this is complete life. So also the without the dissolution ceremony, it's it's incomplete. So we need to dissolve it. But uh, sometimes people wants to keep that in their uh, like uh, their studio. Mm -hmm. So just uh, sometimes we do uh, we let them keep make an exception yeah, once yeah. in a while. Yeah. But when the dissolution does happen, mm. it's a very special ceremony. Yes. Because the, the, the completed mandala mm. goes to a live body of water and it's released. Mm. Those minerals, mm. those colors, the effort. And there is a purpose for that. Yes. Could you tell us what that purpose is? When we do the dissol dissolution ceremony, it has two uh, reasons. So one is the, this is a highest practice and also secret practice. So we don't keep long time. Then we do, we create sand mandala, we do practice, then we dissolve. Mm -hmm. So we don't keep, so it is secret. Mm -hmm. So one is the reason. And second is to uh, teach us the practice of the impermanence, like uh, let, let it go, how to uh, reduce our attachment. So that, that makes us, you know, easier life. So we, uh, it teach us how to accept the reality. So, uh, so it, it teach us that uh, when we are alive, we should not forget to make our life meaningful, to show your love to your close one, to support your close one uh, financially and emotionally. So before it's too late. So just cherish your time and don't uh, don't to be late to make your uh, make uh, your life peace and happy. And uh, uh, the meaning of the you know we put those sin in the water. It means uh, to there's a, so in the on during the practice we give blessing. On the sand, so sand does those blessing go into the water and purify uh, the you know negative energy of the environment to keep the pure water and pure land. I love that. I think that's wonderful. Much of what you do in your practice and in your faith is to bless others. Yeah. Yes, is to serve others. Um, one of the other things that you will be doing and you'll be doing here at the university for the students is the Tibetan calligraphy. Yeah. So we have calligraphy in the United States, but what I understand is that the Tibetan calligraphy that you will be sharing with us is very, very special because it's ancient. Yes. So if I grew up in Tibet, I would not necessarily know how to do this calligraphy. It's kept alive through the monastery. Mm. So will you please tell us a little bit about the Tibetan calligraphy? Around more than 2,000 years uh, in Tibet, we don't have, you know, the complete, properly uh, letter. And uh, our 
one of the, our um, Tibetan teacher went to the India and learn, start to learn Indian grammar and you know Sanskrit language and Pali language, very ancient language of the Indian India. So and also he learned uh, you know Buddhism too, and he come back. So our uh, Tibetan letter is uh, the pronouns and the letter is similarly uh, with the Indian letter. So and also our uh, the religion uh, Buddhism religion is we bring from uh, India and so uh, we are seems like a student of the India so uh, and now we have very rich um, uh, language and traditional and religions. Wonderful. Okay. I love that your neighbors, mm. India, mm. were able to befriend you. Many times countries are threatened mm. by a faith next door mm. and the fact that they welcomed you mm. in, your, in the time of need at one point, but also to help empower you with the script, that's just special. Yeah. So something that we were chatting about before the interview began, mm. you are each holding or wearing a, it looks like beads mm. or a bracelet of beads mm. or a mm. necklace of beads. Could you please share with us the importance of the beads? Yeah, so uh, we the monks do uh, every day the practice of the Buddhisms. So we have our own individual practice. We have different practice and, uh, uh, and the, there's also the practice. We chant the mantra. So there's a lot of different mantra too for to, uh, to different purpose. So uh, and we have the you know limit uh, amount of to chant the mantra. So the beads are uh, you know uh, used for to count the mantra and also it's uh, become a holy and we keep this with us to uh, give feeling the spiritually uh, and uh, uh, feeling that uh, practitioner wants. Wonderful. Now in India where the monastery is located in southern India mm. your focus is not only those who practice within the monastery, mm. but also to serve the people in the community. Yes. And one of the ways that the monastery ha monasteries have done that is through a hospital. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about the hospital? Yes. So normally, generally, uh, our monastery built hospital for the monks' health, but we also uh, give service, uh, some of the, our hospital give free service to the public and some of the mon uh, hospital give the uh, service half charge of the medication. Mm -hmm. So it is open for uh, all the public, not only for monks. That's wonderful. Yeah. And your tour this time in the United States is focusing on raising money mm. for a new dormitory yes. because you've grown. Yes. You've outgrown your space. Mm. And so the 60 room dormitory that you will be erecting is for the elder monks, yes. the oldest of your group. Yeah. That's wonderful. So when we were talking before we came on, I had asked if the government funds you, if there's grants that fund you, and you told me it's totally through the offerings of the people from the Buddhist faith, mm -hmm. and then from people who do the donations mm -hmm. when you're on tours, like here in the United States, yes. where you're educating us, but mm -hmm. you're also providing us an opportunity to serve your community yeah. back home. Yes. That's the neat thing about faith, isn't it? Yeah. We can look different, we can be from different parts of the world, but we can still support each other. Yes, so I think that if we uh, understand 
the nature of the world. So, so if we think like it's a reality that the world is the one house and we are the one family, if we under, really understand about this reality, then uh, we support each other, then we take care of each other, then you know, one in your family that one uh, person is uh, not behave good, then it can disturb it the affects, many people. Yes, so yes. it's like, so if we understand that this world is one uh, house and we are the one family, then uh, this world will be more peaceful and happier. Yes. I totally agree with that. Mm. And the other thing that we talked about was the fact that the world does not get that right now. All of our faiths, yeah. depending on where we're at in the world, are at risk yeah. because there's something that wants to tear down that good. Mm. And yet the good breaks through, the light comes through. Mm. And so it's wonderful that you are able to be here and educate as well as celebrate mm, yeah. our love for one another yeah. and the, the peace that we want to share with others. So butter sculptures, mm. that's you. <laughs> <laughs> so when someone hears butter sculpture in the United States, they may think ice sculpting contest, they may think eating contest, but that is not what butter sculpture is about. Mm. It is very sacred. Yes. And so could we talk about that a little bit? Mm. What is the importance of the butter mm. and the different sculptures? And again, this is something that is schooled. Mm. I just don't wake up in the morning and say, give me some butter, I'm going to turn it into something. Mm. There's much more to it than that. Mm. So in the ritual, in any religion uh, activities, uh, there have the many things they offer, offering to the God and deities and Guru. So butter sculpture, so sometimes we off, offer the fresh water to the God. Sometimes we offer incense, you know, mm -hmm. incense mm -hmm. to purify the environment. In, uh, and, you know, um, so butter sculpture is, uh, is for to offer the food offering to the God and deity. And, uh, uh, you know, it is same, uh, same like when you invite the one of the guests to the, your room to give a feast, uh, to give a food. Sure. So it's same like that. And we have a uh, very different uh, uh, give offering food with a different ritual. So, uh, so that's why we have the many different design of the butter sculpture design. So when you're on tour, do you only go to universities or are you also visiting regular schools like high schools, middle schools? Yes. And then um, what are you doing there? Or is it the same? People have the option of asking you what they would like to have done when you come visit? Yeah, we, we have been uh, many famous university. We have been high school. We have been many Buddhist, temp, uh, Buddhist center and also church and uh, many uh, community and also Tibetan community. So we do the, sometimes we do the ritual, sometimes in university and, uh, you know, high school, we uh, most of, we do the give lecture and uh, um, to and sometimes we share our Tibetan traditional and uh, um, uh, advice of the uh, Buddhisms. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. We hope that this opportunity has provided you some education and some enlightenment on the Buddhist faith, as well as celebrating the fact that we can be from all over the world and still come together in faith. Until next time, be well.